Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be making over these two identical bookshelves and I'm pretty excited about these because these are the same shape and style of bookshelves that people are actually putting into their homes. Those bookshelves that people are putting in are like those built-ins. I'll pop up some pictures here so that you can see. Now obviously these aren't going to be built in, but these bookshelves could be a great alternative for those of who don't have built-in bookshelves. And I think someone is really going to love these. What's awesome about these bookshelves is that they are big. They've got just about everything that you need. They've got two shelves. Now the top shelf is missing the glass insert that it comes with, so I'm going to have to find a place to replace the glass but otherwise it's got another second bookshelf and you can adjust it to the height that you want there's also a drawer and a built-in cabinet space on each of these bookshelves so it's got a little bit of everything we're mostly just going to be updating and modernizing these bookshelves because i still think they're really functional and people are still using bookshelves like these to this day but updating the color and the hardware will make it so that it'll fit into more modern styled homes and we're going to try to target those buyers that want the look of those built-in shelves but don't have it. I got each of these bookshelves for $34.99 so altogether I spent just under $75. Considering the prices that Goodwill has had recently, I'd say that this is actually a steal. Now let's go ahead and get started on this makeover by taking off the hardware. Now before we get too far into this video, if you guys could please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe down below, it'll really help my YouTube channel grow. It tells the algorithm that you're liking this type of content. Plus we are trying to reach a goal of 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so I really do need your guys' help. Now, in addition to taking off the hardware, I'm also pulling out the drawers and I'm going to be unscrewing the hinges on the doors. I want to get everything separate so that it's super easy to work on. My plan for these two bookcases is to change out the hardware but keep the hinges. So I am going to be setting the hinges aside. I'm going to do something special to spruce them up a little bit. But the hinges work perfectly great and I don't want to put more money into this flip than I have to. So I am going to keep them. I followed all the same steps that I just did on the first bookshelf for the next bookshelf. And then it was time to get started into cleaning. Every time that I clean, I use this white bucket with warm water and Dawn dish soap. Most people already have this stuff in their homes and it's really easy to use and it's a very good degreaser, which is why I really like to use it. Recently, I've just been using Scott Rags to wipe everything down. It's been really easy and convenient. I will leave a link to it in the description box down below if you guys wanna try these rags as well as any other product that you see in this video otherwise I do also really like microfiber towels as well the only thing about those is that I do have a dog and even after I wash them somehow the dog hair is always stuck in those microfiber towels sometimes they're just a pain to use because the hair can transfer onto the piece that I'm working on these rags are also just kind of easier for me to use because it's just a one and done use and then you throw them away whereas with microfiber towels you do have to go through washing them and sometimes I would get lazy on washing them or I would just forget before I start a project and then I wouldn't have any clean microfiber towels plus I actually have a person that gets me these rags for free, so I'm not really paying anything for them. I will say though, even if I didn't have someone who got them for me for free, I probably would spend the money to pay for these. Now while I was cleaning, I actually noticed that there are some screws underneath here and I think I'm going to go ahead and take these off because it's going to be a lot sander to paint underneath if it's off and I can actually flip it over. There's four on each so there will be eight screws total and it won't take long to take off and I think it'll definitely be worth it so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I know sometimes it's definitely easier to just leave things in and not take the time to unscrew things like the shelves or the doors on these bookshelves because it takes more time, but I can promise you that if you remove these extra pieces and work on them separately, it's going to turn out so much better than if you just left them in and tried to work around them. Once I had all these pieces separated out and all of the shelves off and everything, I started getting ready to fill in the existing hardware holes. I'm using a little bit of a different product in this video. This is plastic wood from DAP. I actually really do like this stuff. I 
Notice that after it dried, it didn't leave like that little ring around, if you know what I'm talking about. If you've ever filled in hardware holes before, I'm sure you do. I noticed that a lot when I use the Drydex Spackling, so I may actually be moving away from that product. Even though I really do love it, I don't love those ring marks, and I need to find something that doesn't have that because I don't want that to show up in my finished pieces and recently it has been. The wood filler needed some time to dry so I couldn't quite sand the drawers down but I could get started on everything else. I recently bought an attachment for my sander that hooks it right up to my shot back and I really love this method because it cuts out almost all if not all of the dust which is why you don't see me wearing a respirator recently. However, I will say that if you are sanding with only the dust peg that your sander comes with, I would highly recommend using a respirator because there is still a ton of dust that flies around and that can be really harmful to your lungs. Now, spoiler alert, I love how these bookshelves turned out, but it was during the sanding that I realized how big of a project making over these two bookshelves really was. Sanding these bookshelves and all of its parts alone took over an hour. Now, obviously, I'm showing you guys the sped up version because who wants to sit through that? But this project was seriously big. For those of you who may be new here or not very familiar with the furniture flipping process, the reason why I'm sanding these pieces down is so that the paint that I'm going to be putting on these pieces can adhere to it better. Basically, sanding or a scuff sand, which is what I'm doing, creates little holes and it gets rid of all of the shininess so that the paint has a better chance of gripping onto it rather than a sleek smooth surface where it could just scratch right off. So basically anywhere that you're going to paint, I would highly recommend doing a scuff sand. I usually pick between a 220 to a 400 grit and you should stay in that range. All right, so that took about 45 minutes, but all the sanding is done. At this point, I just need to wipe all of the dust back, every surface that got sanded just now, and then we're gonna get started on paint. Now, shout out to Dixie Bell because they actually gifted me some paint that I'm gonna be using in this project today. I'm gonna be mixing together two of their whites. One is going to be white cap and the other is oyster. Both of these are all-in-one paints, which means we don't have to do any priming or top coating. I'm not quite sure if this 32 ounce of white cap would be enough on these and I don't wanna take any chances. So mixing these two together should be more than enough. Now white cap is a very, very bright white and oyster is kind of a more grayish white. I don't need these bookshelves to be a super, super bright white. And I think adding in some of this oyster to the white cap is just gonna make the perfect white for these bookshelves. They also sent me a couple brushes and I'm gonna be trying out their mini angle brush today. I actually haven't used any of their brushes, so I'm pretty excited. I love any brush that has a short handle. So this should work out really good. Because I'm gonna be mixing both of these colors together, like I'm literally gonna use all of the oyster and I'm gonna use all of the white cap. I'm just gonna pour them straight into here. I've got a little insert here. And then as I'm waiting for coats to dry, I can just wrap it up and put it in the fridge. And then when I'm ready to put on the next coat, I can just take it out and it'll be ready to go. It's also nice because then if there's leftovers or if I'm later needing to touch something up before, a uh, customer comes to pick it up and buy it, I'll have the exact color here to be able to do any necessary touch-ups. I'm actually really, really excited to use this paint, so let's get both of these poured and get started.
This isn't my first time using Dixie Belle's paint in their silk line before, but it is my first time using one of their lighter colors, let alone one of their whites in the silk line. And I will say that I was pretty impressed because if you've ever used or painted a white before, you would probably know to expect to have to do quite a few coats. And I've had whites where I've had to do up to six coats with multiple coats of primer. And as I mentioned, Dixie Belle paint is an all-in-one paint, so I didn't have to prime. And even with not having to prime, I only had to do four coats to get this super dark piece to a pretty bright white. From my experience, I will say that there are not many paints out there that can actually do that. So yeah, I'm pretty impressed. You will see that I started off using only their brush, and their brush is pretty good, but because these bookshelves were so big, brushing was not efficient, and for that reason, I mostly was using a roller. However, when it came to corners and curves, I did still use the brush. I kind of just went back and forth and used whatever was easiest for what I was painting at that moment. I think if I were brushing, this project would probably have taken twice as long or maybe even three times as long i mean this project probably did take 10 hours total which usually i can get projects done in like five hours four to five hours not including dry time so this project was already big to take on I'm going to be making these pieces over to sell, and I don't always talk about the numbers, but I do want to for this piece. I'm going to be testing my market on these and pricing them pretty high. I've never sold bookshelves like these before, so I'm not really sure what to expect, but I will say since I've moved in, the previous pieces I've had for sale sold really fast and at solid prices. So call me crazy, but I am going to be trying to sell these for between $1,000 to $1,200. I spent $75 to get these, and I did end up going to Lowe's and spent another $22 on getting new pieces of glass for those shelves that had broke. As we already talked about, the paint that I used on these were gifted to me, and then the hardware that I'm going to be putting on them, I already had on hand. So all in, I spent a little over $100, and I put about 10 hours in, and so I'm going for $1,000 to $1,200 if it all works out as planned. That's going to be a pretty good profit. If you want to stay updated on when I actually sold this piece and how much I actually end up selling it for, you can go ahead and follow me over on Instagram. I like to keep my followers updated there. But otherwise, I just use this Rust-Oleum Gold spray paint on just about everything as far as those little pins that hold up the shelves, the hinges, and I even did it on the hardware and it just looks mm, so good gold. So I've got these pieces inside now because they are just about done, ready to be staged and listed on a Facebook marketplace. But I wanted to show you guys just one more way that you can get your furniture to stand out or sell faster than maybe some of the other listings on Facebook marketplace. Once you think that you are done flipping your furniture, it looks amazing, right? But you can also make sure that it smells amazing. Along with the paint, Dixie Belle also gifted me some Big Mama's Butter in Orange Grove. And let me tell you guys, this stuff smells amazing. So what I'm gonna do with this stuff is just take a paper towel and rub some inside the drawers. That way when the potential buyers come and open this piece up, it's gonna catch them by surprise because it's gonna smell really, really good. And that just might be the thing that pushes them over to actually buy this piece. Yeah, you guys, that seriously smells so, so good. And I think this piece is now ready to be staged up and listed on Facebook Marketplace. Now, if you guys like this type of content, please make sure to like this video and subscribe down below if you aren't already. We are trying to reach a goal of 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I really need your guys' help to be able to hit that. You can go check out one of my other furniture flipping videos. Otherwise, I also just bought a fixer upper house and I'm filming the whole process of that renovation. And you guys can check those videos out as well. Otherwise, I will see you guys Try
Sing that. 